Okay, so this thing took me forever to actually set up. And I want to save some people the pain of going through that. So here's some tips on how to set up the emulator correctly to play two player on it. The only thing I'm not going to show in this video is how to set up and get the ROMs. It's kind of pretty simple to figure that out. And if you've messed with emulators, you should know how to do that. So the first thing you want to do is go to your setting and start with your general tab. This is where you're going to have kind of like the location of your ROMs and also how they run. I'm using these settings. I would say throughout this video, pause and just kind of copy my settings other than like the locations for your files. Um, but mostly this kind of works. The only thing you'll have to kind of maybe change is kind of the uh, location. I have it on Europe and that's what's worked for me. But depending on which ROM that you're running, you may have to change it. So just a heads up. Now we go to the controls. The controls we're going to have to update real quick. We're going to have to jump into the game to adjust them. And then we're going to do a little bit of changes later on when we start running the two player setup. But before we're going to go over the software that I'm using to connect the two wheels. So for this, I'm using two wheels. I'm using the Logitech Wingman Formula Force GP and the Logitech Driving Force GT. The Wingman is the initial D wheel that I bought from Japan. Um, it comes up as his name, but I'm not sure like why it, there's nothing um, told me that that was the name. So, but that's what it's called apparently. So with both wheels, I'm using the software called Logitech Profiler. Um, it's also known as Logitech Gaming Software. This software is pretty plug and play. It sets up your wheels and everything. Um, there's really no tweaks you have to do once you download it, as long as you just have the wheels connected. Um, it lets me switch them both and adjust anything I need to do. Um, the only thing that you need to adjust in here that I've noticed when playing Initial D is you want to go to your global device settings. So on global device settings, I click this box that says enable centering spring in force feedback games. You want to do this because I noticed when I played Initial D on the emulator, Whenever I hit a speed bump or something, my wheel would shake aggressively and it felt fine until I started to turn and then my wheel kind of disconnected and I'd go straight into the wall. So this thing kind of like calms the uh, force feedback of the game. And so this helps a lot when you're trying to calibrate and make sure that you're not crashing into walls. Okay, so go back to the main screen with all the games that you've set up. And we're going to click on Initial D version 2 and start the game. If everything's working correctly, you'll see the Naomi 2 opening screen drop down, and then you'll see these setups. Once the game starts and you see free play in the bottom left corner, you're going to hit tab on the keyboard if you're using Windows, and you're going to basically open up the settings menu. And then that's when you're going to go to your controls. And the wheel that you're going to play on, you're going to set the port to A, and then leave any other wheels as none, just so they don't interfere with your computer because you're running two wheels on the same computer. And then you're going to go to map. Now on the mapping screen, you're going to go to the top right where it says Dreamcast controls. And we're going to set that to arcade controls. Once you do that, you're going to see the configuration change specifically for initial D. It will show you where your gear up, your gear down, your brake and accelerator buttons are. And they're now attributed to the left trigger, right trigger, button one and button two. Now here's where it gets weird. Right now, I have a map to what I use to play the game, but I'm going to show you what happens when you try to map it correctly and how it kind of confuses you. So here is where I'm going to map the buttons, how you think you should map them, where I'm going to hit the brake and the accelerator and map them to each individual key. But you'll see in this clip right here, when I do that, it ends up causing me to brake with my accelerator and gas with my brake. And this is kind of the issue what I saw and I was very confused by it. And I don't know if it's a glitch in the emulator or something, but the only way around it is you have to switch the buttons. So you have to go back into the control settings and map it for your brake being your accelerator and your accelerator being your brake. So when you do that, then you actually can play the game like this. So now that you've done that, you want to make sure that you map the same for the accelerator and brake on the other wheel. Um, and also adjust any kind of like buttons as start, view, select, all those. Also here with uh, anything on your wheel that you want to adjust to. Now that we've done that, it's time to move on to the other controls. So we're on to the video settings. Again, just copy, pause the screen, copy all the settings. Um, this is what worked for me. 
Um, it may work for your system a little bit differently, but try this out as a base starting point and then adjust from there. The only thing you may have to adjust is the graphics API, which I'm using DirectX 11 um, and it's worked so far, but I've seen people use Vulkan and some other ones. So you may have to adjust this if your emulator starts kind of glitching based on your system that you're using. Now onto the audio settings. The audio settings, I did not touch at all. It's pretty much just plug and play. This is exactly what I left it as. All right, now we're at the advanced tab. This tab is pretty much the key to making the game work with two players. The key feature you wanna set here is enable Naomi networking. This allows for two instances of Flycast to talk with each other so they can play two player. So what you have to do here is to click enable Naomi networking. Once you do that, it will open a kind of server and port um, section and it also uh, have this feature that says act as server. When you're doing this, you wanna make sure that one system or one instance of Flycast is set as a server, act as server, and then another one it does not have that feature and is set not act as server, but then it has a port change. So we're gonna, I know that sounds very complicated, but like I'll go over it step by step. So click enable Naomi networking and then click act as server. Set the port number to 37391. Uh, make sure everything else on here is set the exact same way. So take the first instance and drag it to the left and make it horizontal. And then we're gonna open a second instance of Flycast. So you click down at the Flycast icon and then you click Flycast. This will open a second instance and now they're kind of like separately running. It's like two arcade systems running at the same time. Then we're going to check enable Naomi networking and then we're going to leave unchecked active server. And then we're going to set the port to 3792. They can't be the exact same port numbers. That's kind of key here. They have to be two different numbers. Now you're going to go into the controls of the second instance and you're going to set the wheel, the second wheel as port A and leave the other one as none. That's This is a thing you have to do in each time you open the instances because when you open the instance it will default to whichever port you have set up and if everything worked correctly on the first instance it will say one player's connected waiting and then that's how you know you've fully done it and it's completed now you just have to wait until it's all set up or links correctly and then the game will play now the last thing i will say about this and i haven't figured out a fix for it and i don't know if there is a fix but because you're playing two instances of two games on the same screen you have audio coming from both games this may be mitigated by playing on two different computers or two different screens um, i'm not sure or like maybe there's a way around it but that's the only issue you get like doubled audio and it really can cause you to give it a headache so you may want to turn off the audio for one system but once you get into the race it does sync up pretty perfectly with the song awesome <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I'd have to see what you guys said uh, first. Go on. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, that, this is the take. This is what we're going with. Boom.